Hey guys, I want to remind everybody before we get into our first topic that you can get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA teams with quick bets, live game same parlays, exclusive props, and more. You guys just have to visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and shoot your shot. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, so we're going to start with the Cavs, guys, and more specifically some comments from Donovan Mitchell after the game on Darius Garland. So the Cavs beat Washington. It was an ugly game, but a win's a win. It snaps their two-game skid to open up the second half of the season. Donovan Mitchell did play. He looked like a shell of himself dealing with some injury. Darius Garland hit some big shots late in the fourth quarter to cut the lead in half and then tie the game. And down the stretch, they relied on Darius to be the point man in their offense. And I want to read you guys this quote here from Donovan Mitchell afterwards. Chris Fedor put the article out on cleveland.com. Check out the full article, but this is a quote, and I'm going to read the full quote. This is part of it, but Donovan said after the game, I'm on social media, and I feel like people aren't giving Darius the benefit of the doubt, Mitchell told cleveland.com. I want to speak on that because I think it's bull crap. He did not say crap. At the end of the day, he is a kid that has proven himself not only to the Cleveland fan base, but this league as well. I think it's uh, they're ready to rag on a kid for what? One half of a season? I think that's BS. I've been waiting to say that. Darius is continuing to find his way. It's been two months and he's slowly getting back to it. At the end of the day, he's going to be there for us. Understanding that come playoffs, come whenever, we need him. He knows that. He's continuing to build. We have all the confidence in the world in him, but the way people have been talking is effing ridiculous. The kid has done a lot here. So much. For it to be devalued all for a few games is complete BS. It's not fair to him. He's done so much for us as a team before I got here, while I've been here. He's going to get back to his form. The kid is just 24 years old. It's not always easy to figure it out. He's done a phenomenal job of it and will continue to get back to it come playoff time. He will be right back there with us. We have his back. End quote from Donovan Mitchell. You can read the full article in Cleveland.com. Earl, I'll start with you. Yeah, of course. I, I, I think Every, Donovan, everybody, look, why, why y'all both just I, look I'm at saying, me? Donovan coming to Darius' defense. What do you hey, make of the we, comments? And, and we might have put play? some smoke on him. Did we, we, did we put him in the smoke on, on, on Saturday or something, Earl? That, Listen, that's what I think he talked about. First and foremost, man, great leadership by Donovan Mitchell, right? That's what you're supposed to do. Another example of every athlete hears and see everything, not just, just Deshaun Watson. I thought Donovan Mitchell did a great job for standing up for his boy. That's his teammate. Another feather in his cap to prove like he's all in with the Cleveland Cavaliers. But with that being said, I love you, Spider, but the criticism on DG is warranted. To me, it's very well warranted. And just because people are critical of him, I don't think it means that people want to see him fail. His success is directly tied to the Cavaliers' success. For me, I'm critical of Darius Garland because I know he's talented, but it's like, I just want you to be more consistent. I just want you to assert yourself more often than not in big moments. You know, I want you to put forth the other intangibles that's necessary when you're talking about somebody that's a part of your core, right? Like, when Donovan Mitchell missed those two games, if I'm Darius Garland, that was my time to step up. It's, no, it's gut check time, right? Like, let me show you what I'm about. Let me show you who I am. Let me assert myself, right? And sometimes I feel like people, especially here, because we love what we have, they get caught up on two words, max player. And if we being honest with ourselves, Darius Garland don't always play up to the level of a max player. And I get what Donovan Mitchell is saying. Like, people are, like, forgetting the things that he did before Donovan Mitchell got here, people forgetting like when he was an all-star, people acting like the dude can't hoop and can't ball. And I'm not one of those dudes. I'm always quick to say he's talented as ever. That's not my issue with him. My issue with Darius Garland is, man, you don't assert yourself and you're not consistent. And if you're a max player and if people don't want you to come off the bench because you're a max player, then you need to show up and show out every single night like a max player. I get it. And if everybody was saying, well, he's just getting back from injury, he missed 19 games due to injury. I think he's played like 13, 14 games. 13 games, games yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, that number is starting to level out. Just go out there and be more consistent in the search or so. And I don't think that's asking for too much. G? Shout out to, uh, shout out to Donovan Mitchell. I think, in, 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 and I'm going to be honest with you, we'll take the L for it. I, and it's not even no L. I came in on my Saturday show on, on the barbershop 8 to 12. And um, I said, nah, unacceptable, unacceptable. 
Uh, and I was I was really upset at the level they was playing the last two games when Donovan Mitchell wasn't there. And it's not about making or missing or anything. It's not about people even shooting slumps or coming back from rotation. I feel like when Donovan Mitchell is not there, everybody turns around and they put up no resistance. Uh, Karis LeVert, I'm glad you had a triple-double, but the night before, you couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. You had one dunk and that was it. Uh, Darius Garland, your job is to get people acclimated and get them into the offense and do his thing. Guess what? You be turning the ball over and you dribble a whole lot, a whole lot when, when, when Donovan Mitchell is not there. And J.B. Bickerstaff, Sometimes I need you to do certain things like, hey, instead of yelling at the ref on every single call, how about getting your team's face when they when they not playing defense or say, guys, we're not. Listen, I told you what we're trying to play. We're trying to play a certain tempo. We're trying to play a certain offense. We're not doing that right now. You guys got to get your head out of your ass and let's get it going. You never hear it. You just sit him here and, and he's beating up the referee's ears from start to finish. Say something to your team. For me, it's not about no, you know, whether or not you lose games on coming back from a back-to-back. Man, it's about this. This organization, as I'm watching other teams play, you need to stop worrying about what you think is good for you and start comparing yourself to the other people. You, I watch the Boston Celtics and the Knicks from bell to bell. And them, them Knicks and Thibodeau, these dudes had playoff rotations. I said, dang, they blitzing already. They got the playoff rotations, McNuggets, people yeah. moving around. Defensive, they, they, they got the rotation moving. They playing defense, and guess what? Brunson is a killer. He came out aggressive, and guess what? Still didn't matter. Them dudes, Jalen Brown and Tatum and them, pushed them, wiped them off the face of the court. Like, it wasn't nothing, and the Knicks had a good game plan. So, if you telling me that we bad for getting on Darius Garland, it's not about whether Darius Garland is a young kid, 24 ain't that young. We've, we've seen winners here before. We've seen the same thing he getting is the same smoke we gave Kyrie. This is not Utah. Sometimes, yeah, we care. And, and they finding out what happens when you get to Cleveland Browns magnifying glass McNuggets. Because guess what? Darius Garland make just as much as Deshaun Watson. And you know what kind of smoke Deshaun Watson get here. Yeah, I don't want to harp on the, the contract yet. I want to just focus on what Donovan said and I think the reasoning behind what he said. To Earl's point, I think most, I don't want to say all of it, but I think most of the criticism of Darius Garland over the last, what, three weeks now, a month, whatever yeah. he's been back, is pretty valid. I don't think all of it is, but I think for the most part, it's fair to ask a guy of Darius's talent to be a little more consistent and aggressive, especially when Donovan Mitchell is not in the game. But what Donovan said last night, and this is why I think it's so important, is he understands that when push comes to shove come playoffs, he 100% unquestionably needs Darius Garland to be on his A game if the Cavaliers are going to go on any type of run this postseason. Do you guys disagree with that? We need the best version of Darius if the Cavs are going to make any kind of significant noise against the top teams in the East. And right now, right now, my biggest issue with Darius is it feels like he's not confident in his own game. And he's still working back from injury. I know he's a little... I don't want to say scarred, but it looks like he's a little hesitant to draw contact after the facial fracture he suffered earlier this season. He needs to get his full confidence back to come back into the player we saw when he was an all-star point guard and one of the up-and-coming guys around the league that not just people in Cleveland, but people all across the national landscape were saying, yeah, that guy's next up in terms of the great point guards across the NBA. Darius needs his confidence back. How do you do that? Well, you make shots, and he made two massive three-pointers last night to cut Washington's lead from 94 to, it was 94-88. The first three made it 94-91. The second one tied it up. He had a couple key drives late in the game, setting up other players, which allowed the Cavs to extend their lead. And it also comes from knowing the best guy on the team has your back. And what he showed last night with those comments is, Darius, ignore the outside noise because the guys in the foxhole with you, the guys in this locker room, we believe in what you can do on the court. We believe in what you can bring to this offense, even if it may not be the perfect schematic fit. We know you can't, what you do can't be replicated by anyone else. And to have Donovan come out and say that publicly with the emphatic nature he did, he cursed. Donovan usually doesn't curse in his press conferences. Now, do you remember the 10th game of the season? He said, we're playing. That's some BS. He said the same thing to Fedor. And what happened right after that? Cavs kind of turned it around. When Donovan curses, I'm not saying a curse (laughs) word is really emphatic, but When Donovan says it because he doesn't typically use that language to the media, 
it kind of holds a little more value. I like and that. And to him to come out and defend Darius with that level of oomph, for lack of a better word, if that doesn't inject some confidence into Darius, I'm not sure what else can. So I, I loved it to the... 10th most level, whatever the highest exponential value you could love something from Donovan, I thought it was a perfect leadership move from the Cavs' best player. I, I mean, I, that's great, you know. I like <laughs> I like what he said. Like, hey, if, if somebody says something about Earl, I'm going to come to his defense, right? And then I'll handle it behind closed doors. Of, like, in public, like, like we always say, hey, if you go and you start fighting, you're automatically in the fight. I'll figure out what happened later and be like, hey, bro, you was tripping. You got us in this fight. But from, from the standpoint of Donovan Mitchell and how, we, how I look at the Cavs is this. Darius Garland has to figure out where he, where he is in his offense. And I've been talking about – and, and that, when he said his comments, he said he, you guys are upset of him about, you know, half a game or a game or two. No, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about not only this year, we're talking last year. Like, Darius Garland should understand the business nature of this and people will get on you because guess what? He was here when they picked Colin, they picked him over Colin Sexton, right? Mm -hmm. He we Colin Sexton got the same smoke. He has he has empty points. He does he dribbles too much. He takes shots. He don't be playing defense. He's just a one trick pony. So they they traded him. They got him up out of here. And now you know Darius Garland got his max deal. At the end of the day, I don't care about the max deal. It's about because any player that plays at a certain level the way the league works is going to get a max deal yeah. regardless, even if yeah. they, they live up to it or not. I get that. But my thing is, for them to win, he is going to have to step his game up. And it's Jared Allen, we called, we talked about Jared Allen way worse. Yeah. Did we not? <laughs> yeah, no, way, no, way worse. And his comeback has been and that much more impressive. He's a he was ball as, player right now. And even Isaac Okoro. Last Isaac season, Okoro. I mean, that was a guy that I personally said I thought was unplayable. And now I think he's a guy... You can't take off the court. So. Hard. They're hardened individuals now. Now Jared Allen, like, I'm turning on TV. Jared Allen leading the team and scoring. Three Jared, games in a row. Three games in a row. 22, 23. He getting 10 rebounds. And guess what? He, they interview him at halftime. What can you do? I got I to be better on defense. No games. He's not playing games no more. Now, not saying Darius is playing games, but there has to be a mindset play that if the Cavs are going to get to where they want to go, there are teams in this Eastern Conference that's not going to play with you come time, playoff time. It's just not going to happen. I just don't think nothing – I don't think it's nothing wrong with asking one of the best players on your team that you know is capable of being better to be better on a more consistent basis. I don't think it's nothing wrong with that. Like, if that was one of us, you would challenge one of us to be better yeah. on a more consistent basis. Donovan Mitchell did the right thing. You're supposed to do that. That's, that's what good leaders do. They come out on the forefront and they speak truth to light about what he really feel. He's clearly been seeing this for the last three weeks to a month. It was on his heart. It was on his chest. He got it off. Whatever conversations him and Darius Garland have behind closed doors, that's behind closed doors. But in my opinion, anybody that's in this city that's, that's covering the Cavs, that's covering Cleveland sports media, and they have a critical take on Darius Garland, I don't think they want to see Darius Garland fail. I no, think no, everybody, no everybody fail, yeah. understands that his success is directly tied to the Cavs' overall success. I'm one of those dudes, like, if, if I give some constru constructive criticism, like, I'm not taking shots at you personally. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving you my opinion on how I feel. Like, I want you to go out there and shut me up. I want you to go out there and be that dude who, like, he going to always put up numbers. Yeah. Darius Garland has always put up numbers, but to be honest, sometimes the stats are empty. Well, and it, it comes. And you to, talked about that. Yeah. Like, well, it, it comes down to this. Darius is averaging what eighteen and seven this year. Yeah. And what's the season? It's eighteen and six, eighteen and seven. If you ask like Ty Jerome, right? And I know he hasn't played this season. If Ty Jerome put up eighteen and six in the game, we'd be thrilled, right? That's yeah. a great game for Ty Jerome. I was talking to my buddy who works for the Mavs last night. I was like, "How'd Luca do on uh, on Saturday?" He's like, eh, "He had an okay game." I'm like, "What's that?" He's like, eh, "He had 32, 11, and nine. Well, for Lucas standards, that's an okay game. That's a career night for 99.5% of the league. Darius Garland, we expect more because we know he can deliver more. And the inconsistency part of Darius, I know he's still working back, and I'm not ready to uh, you know, sell my Darius stock or anything to that nature yet, but it is fair to say, Darius, we know you can play at an all-star level, especially when Donovan's out. We need you to take on a bigger role and be more assertive, be more aggressive, and it's not even the shot attempts. It's the play creation for others as well, potential assists. Because the assist numbers could, could be deceiving. You can mm -hmm. make 30 great passes. Guys make two shots, you have two assists. 
but it's those potential assists, the ability to get into the paint, into the paint create for others, create good looks for not only yourself, but the George Niangs of the world, the Isaac Okoros, the Max Struces, the pick and roll chemistry with Mobley and Allen. That's totally fair. And I do think to your point about consistency, Earl, the only reason we want it more from Darius is we know he has it in him. We've seen it. The only thing before we pivot and get to Donovan Mitchell's MVP case, the only thing I disagree with Donovan is there's a lot of people who come in from other different places. And because Cleveland has not been a winner forever or without LeBron, they have this natural thing where they, they feel we're some sort of charity case. And when you say, oh, he's done so much. You said that's like that's like being the. Girl, he, hasn't done, he hasn't done anything. Like yet. what do you what do you what do you mean he's done so yeah. much? Like like you haven't come and changed. You didn't win rookie of the year. You haven't went to no finals. You you haven't won a playoff series. Like what do you what is he referring to when he should have the benefit of the doubt and hasn't won anything? Like it's a lot of times that people want to think that Cleveland. Well, you know what? You guys should be just happy for what you get because you guys haven't been so good. No. We, we, we've seen championships here before. We've seen our team go and play the Golden State Warriors, and we see what championship-level basketball is. So, no, he hasn't done anything, and no, he's not getting a bit of it out, and that goes for everybody on the team. Including Donovan. Including, including Donovan. Donovan yeah. So, no, y'all ain't proved nothing. Like, yeah, like, see, this is what I'm saying. You got to the second in the East. That's cool. I love it. But y'all ain't done. Finish your breakfast. Finish your food. Yeah. Finish your plate, bro. Uh, and one more thing before we pivot to the Donovan Mitchell MVP case. Earl, we saw last night Karis LeVert, a near triple-double. He was two assists shy. George Niang had a couple threes. Max Struess, even though he didn't shoot the ball well, his chemistry with Evan Mobley down the stretch kind of was the catalyst of their fourth-quarter run before Darius hit those two threes. How uh, enthousi- not enthusiastic, but how, how good was it to see a couple guys outside of the usuals step up and be the catalyst in this Cavs run, especially after we saw from Karis the last two games prior which was not good. Yo, Karis flat out balled. I mean, Donovan, awesome Donovan Mitchell scored 16 points, and it was cool. Like, not even the fact, like, it was cool to see Jared Allen and Kar- Karis LeVert in particular mm-hmm. kind of, like, be the leading scorers and kind of lead the way. 12 rebounds, 8 assists, 18 points. Like, the dude, like, he his he shot awesome. selection was awesome. It seemed like he picked his spots in his moments, like, very well. Um, I thought Jared Allen did a great job taking advantage of a weak Washington Wizards uh, front court. Like, they allow, like, the third or second most rebounds to opposing centers or something and like that. And they made it a case early to go down low to yeah. Mobley and Allen. And so, like, they dominate you know, one. kudos to everybody for understanding what their opponent was and kind of, like, maximizing on that game plan. It was actually one of those games to where if Donovan Mitchell was going to be off and you could tell he was still ill, still dealing with whatever he's dealing with, this was the perfect opponent. G, what do you think about Karis, Niang, Struess, and even Jared Allen for that sense, picking up the slack for the offensive? That that's what we that's what we need. That's that that is called veteran understanding what you are. Sometimes you need to be reminded what you are. Karis Levert, you're a guy that can get fifty in this league. I've seen you do it. George Niang, you you're a guy that that can get hot just like Sam Merrill. I've seen you do that. Like you know what I'm saying. So for the Cavs to get where they want to go. Man, and I keep just saying this, is, is I'm watching the other teams. I'm watching, I watched the entire game of the Los Angeles Lakers and the Phoenix Suns, and, and I saw how Grayson Allen was like, oh, I'm not going to miss. Like, I, you, you see how Bradley Beal is out, and they, they step up, and KD does his thing, and Nurkic just came off the bench um, after playing, having a DMP almost, and then comes in and gets the first eight, 10 points of the game, being aggressive down low against Anthony Davis. So when I be saying this stuff, I don't be just saying it as a vacuum of like, I'm just watching the Cavs. I'm watching these other games and I'm seeing how these other teams is trying to figure it out. And the Cavs is a good place if Karis LeVert could do that and Jared Allen can consistently do that. And I'm thinking Jer- that's built in their, their, that's built in what they want to do, um, getting, getting to where they want to go. One last thing. This is the second time in as many games against this particular team that we've played down to against yeah. our opponent. Yeah. And going back to before the All-Star break, when we played Philly, and Philly was missing damn near any, everybody, mm-hmm. and they beat us, the Cavs clearly have shown, like, they need to tighten up on some things. And Donovan yeah. Mitchell alluded to that as well. So I trust that they'll get it together. Like, it's, like they'll clean it up and, and get it right when it's time. Luka's coming to town? 
Luka and, and Kyrie. Kyrie. Hell, it's a hell of a stretch coming up. They have the Mavericks, the Knicks, and the Celtics in the next Ooh. eight days. You're going to find out a lot. And I believe all th- I know the first two are at home. Dallas and New York is at home. I yeah. think Boston is home as well. I could be wrong on that. But in the next eight days, I know they play those three teams. And then they got Phoenix and Minnesota coming up in two weeks after that. So we're going to learn a lot about these Cleveland Cavaliers in the next few days. And you got to Boston read- is also at home, just so you know. Boston is at home? Boston is yeah, at home. Yeah, all three of those are at home.